is going on team? Fitzy here. Welcome to the channel. Okay, so obviously you've just seen we've been hooking in, getting a bit of Benelli M4 action. Um, what to say about this shotgun. Let's go back. Before I get into the shotgun, kind of want to talk on, um, I guess, the purpose of me getting involved um, with weapons and the new segment that we're going to be um, we're going to be getting into here on um, on the channel. Um, I guess, yeah. So first things first is, you know, what are the what are the reasons why um, getting back to, I guess, uh, running and gunning? Uh, the first thing is is because. I love running and gunning. Um, it's a, it was a huge part of my life um, in my military career, both within the infantry and special operations. And I just fucking love shooting. Um, it's just it's just one of those things that I miss. And so, hey, why not make content around it? Um, the second thing is is in New Zealand, there's nothing really like it. And I feel like when I'm on YouTube, when I'm watching content, when I'm looking at anything um, from at least a New Zealand perspective, there's no real good, um, what I find interesting at least, uh, firearms content. So with that said, I'm going to make the content that I wish was out there. Um, and then the third thing being is, it's one of those things where quite often, um, when you're speaking to dudes about firearms, about weapon systems, about training, about the practical at the practical application of shooting, of marksmanship principles, of all those of all those good things, um, or when it comes down to buying a different firearm, choosing a firearm, selecting a firearm, what gun do you want? What's the use case? There is a lot out there in terms of tech data, forums, stuff you could read, but in terms of just seeing the weapon system in action being used seeing the effectiveness of the weapon system you just can't beat video you can't beat good video again so um you know again if you're if you're looking at a weapon system if you're if you're thinking about buying a weapon system over the next however many years we we, we run this out hopefully i will have a video on that weapon system it will be my thoughts feelings and opinions on using the weapon system okay so one thing is what's going to make this different or what's going to make my content different to what's already out there one thing is is i don't really care to listen to somebody talk about tech data on a specific weapon system for for, for a lengthy period of time um, for me it's quite boring and i know for a lot of shooters out there they love to talk about data and they love to talk um, about the the theoretical side of shooting um, i'm a very uh, I'm a very visual, hands-on, practical person. Um, I do a lot of my learning by uh, by, do by doing, by touching, by feeling. Um, and so that's what I want this channel to be about. There's enough guys out there with far more knowledge than me, with far more um, hunger and thirst for, for, for data, um, not me, um, who, who, who are putting that information out there. And it's gonna be better and it's gonna be more effective. Why? Because I simply don't give a fuck. Um, where that comes from, some people may think like, oh, you know, like you're in special operations, you should know all the, look, you, you get into the, even in the infantry, it's like, what is the length of, I mean, we didn't use this shotgun, but as an example, what is the length of the Benelli M4? I really don't care. Because if you're in the military, if you're in a unit, generally speaking, if you're given the shotgun and someone says, Fitzy, carry that shotgun, the length of it is irrelevant. I'm carrying the fucking thing anyway. Whether I have to crawl through a tunnel, jump in a window, be in a vehicle, whatever it is, I have to carry this anyway. So knowing the length, the weight, this, that, the, again, the weight is another one. What is the weight of, you get that to, in, the, in the army all the time. Oh, what's the weight of your weapon system? You know, oh, 3.5 kilos unloaded or whatever the hell it is. And for me, it was always like, why does that even matter? It's not like that can affect my, my loadout. Like, I, I, you, this is my issued weapon system, therefore I will carry it. <laughs> and that's it. And it comes down to another one I've, I've brought up before is like, oh, you know, like it's a, a one in seven, you know, the, the, the twist rate in, in, your, in your barrel. It's a one in seven twist. And you're just like, for me, again, it means nothing. This is like, I'm not talking about this weapon system here, but again, it's like, if this was my weapon system and whatever the twist rate of this barrel is, is like, 
whatever it is. It doesn't matter because this is what I'm issued. This is what I have to use. This is what I have to be proficient at using. So instead of sitting here memorizing the, 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 the weight, the length, the, 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 the one in seven twist rate or whatever other meaningless statistic uh, where we're taught to memorize about weapon systems is I would rather be on a range um, getting rounds down range, practically using the weapon, shoot, move, communicate, pierce, fire, maneuver, you know, infantry, platoon level assaults, or, you know, in a commando, as a commando up at the kill house running rooms. I would rather spend my time there because that's what makes me a better shooter. That's what makes me a better operator. And that's what makes me a better end user. And that is what is going to do the same thing for you. You can read all the books. You can study all the theory. What's going to make you a better shooter is by going out there and actually shooting. Now, I will say one thing, dry drills matter. Um, running dry drills, sitting there, getting to there, getting to know your weapon system, how it operates, all the, all the things. Um, that is more effective um, than actually sitting there reading about it. Okay, so I guess that kind of caps off the direction in which we're gonna take the channel. Um, this episode here, this will probably probably be the most yarning in this setting here. We were gonna do it out on the range, the wind was blowing, so I've decided to come back into the studio where we do our photography, um, and I'm doing the, the, the talk about the weapon system in here because the wind was up, and the last thing I wanted to do was kind of have, have this conversation uh, whilst the wind is blowing all over our microphones because that is annoying and distracting. Um, the second thing is, is I will be bringing people on the channel, uh, on the channel, um, on this video here. You've seen Callum a little bit in the mix, um, especially once we get into the long range shooting. I will get Callum in there to bring out some useful information. But again, Callum's going to think a whole lot of stuff's useful. I'm going to think it's unuseful, and I'm just going to put in here what I think is really useful. He knows a lot of good information. Um, he knows a lot about the data and the science of shooting. And the way I've kind of explained it is like, I am the violence, here's the science. And so I'm gonna be looking for people like that to bring on the channel to make sure, you know, there's a little bit of data, there's a little bit of information, um, because especially once you get into uh, long range shooting, the, the, the data side of the house is, is important and understanding it is, is, is important. Um, but I still think, you know, actually getting out there um, lasing targets, using your ballistics applications, and then actually applying those changes to your to your scopes, to your turret systems, um, you know, reading and judging wind, all that stuff, again, you, you, you can watch a, a hundred videos on it, you spend one day at the range, engaging targets, um, multiple different, at multiple different ranges, um, actually using your weapon system, using your equipment, using your hardware, um, using your ballistics, uh, ballistic applications, you're just going to get a whole lot more um, from it and a greater understanding as well as to why that information is important. Um, so there will be guests coming on uh, and there will be guys helping out on the channel. And that's just because, um, you know, I'd love to sit there and, and spend lots of time, um, you know, getting to know each and, each and every weapon system inside and out. Um, but the reality is, is I'm doing this for fun and for education purposes and for entertainment purposes. Um, but at the same time, I do have a company to run, which is Warfighter Athletic, as you mostly know. Um, Warfighter Athletic takes up a lot of my time. Um, so that's where the majority of my energy goes. And then this will be the, the second thing um, that I'll be putting a lot of time and energy into. Um, but a business is like a child. And so I shall look after my child like a good father, like I do my actual children. Um, and so that's why I will be bringing guests on and I'm not just going to sit here spouting off stuff that I've just read from a book because I can't stand listening to people who have just read a fucking book and uh, they're now spouting the information as if they know it intimately when they do not. Anything else to add there? No. No. That's it. That's all we've got to add. Um, okay, no, actually, third thing, we're looking, to, we're going to be partnering um, with, with, with specific companies and brands um, on gear and guns. Uh, obviously, most of the clothing you're going to see, uh, the clothing space is going to be from Warfighter Athletic, and we are developing a lot of clothing. So on this channel, you're going to see a lot of the prototypes and stuff. We're going to be running them out um, on the range, on the hill, and uh, all that good stuff. Uh, Sabre Tactical, another great uh, New Zealand veteran-owned and operated company. Um, extremely high-quality tactical solutions when it comes to uh, nylon-based nylon products predominantly. Um, 
Uh, you've seen it in some of our photo shoots. We're running some Sabre Tactical gear, uh, but we're actually gonna be out there um, running and gunning, um, using and putting Sabre Tactical gear to the test um, and providing, I guess, some feedback on, on gear like that if that's what you guys are interested in. And then also, at the moment, this uh, shotgun here, this Benelli M4, was provided to us by Gun City. Um, but again, if, uh, you, you, if you have a gun, if you have a weapon system, if you have a company you wish for us to reach out and engage with, to then uh, get out there and stress test their weapon systems and show you guys the capabilities of it, um, then let me know in the comments down below and I will hook in to that. Okay, I'm not gonna go over, um, I'm not gonna go over this, this weapon system in detail and that's because I have not gone over this weapon system in detail myself. I'm gonna go over this weapon system um, as, an, as an end user and someone who has just used this weapon system on the weekend for the first time because that's exactly what happened, okay? So in my military career, I didn't have a lot of experience with shotguns. Um, the most experience I had with shotguns was around breaching shotguns and that wasn't until I got into um, the uh, commandos um, as a commando. And so pretty much we ran breaching shotguns, obviously, as a, as, as, as a solution, as an option to get through um, a, a, a locked door. Um, in terms of actually, you know, having a, a semi-automatic shotgun developed specifically for military use, have not engaged in using such weapon systems. Okay, so what I know about the Benelli M4 um, as this was uh, designed in conjunction with and specifically for, I believe, the United States Marine Corps. Um, and they wanted it as their, their primary go-to uh, combat shotgun. Okay, so it is a semi-automatic shotgun. Um, they have a, little, a, a neat little acronym. I think it's ARGO, which is Auto Regulated Gas Operated. Something like that. A nice little acronym. Probably should have looked at that before we got on here, but I didn't. Um, anyway, it's a semi-automatic shotgun. This thing is a lot of fun. Um, I've never really had um, a great fetish or interest in shotguns. Breaching, you know, breaching shotguns are fun. Blowing locks um, and all that sort of stuff off is a fuckload of fun. Um, shooting off rebar and all that stuff, it is fun. Um, but I've never had a real lust for shotguns until the weekend until the damn weekend. This thing is ridiculously fun to shoot. Um, I've fired shotguns when we're talking uh, shooting clays, but not so much in the, in the tactical sense other than I just mentioned before, which is the uh, breaching shotguns. And you know you can get a, a relative degree of recoil. I was waiting for a lot more recoil um, with this weapon system, but I found that it was extremely, um, extremely fun to shoot, easy to shoot, and I shot this thing all day long. Obviously, depending on what ammunition type that you're going to have in here, when we were just shooting general, um, that was the, the majority of what we shot, general trap loads. Um, you can shoot that, you can shoot those all day long through the shotgun, and it is a lot of fun. Well, once we, start, once we started to get into some of the other, um, the heavier, I guess, ammunition types, uh, the, the, the buckshot um, uh, and the three inch magnum, that thing, as you'll see in the video, definitely kicks. There's a lot of spice, um, so to speak, in, in, the, in the three inch magnum. But other than that, uh, a really fun shotgun to shoot. My overall take on this shotgun, and this is as deep as I'm gonna go into it, right? My overall take on the shotgun is, I like it because one, collapsible buttstock. If I was carrying this tactically, and you've seen it in the photo, you can strap it quite nicely to the outside of your pack um, and be carrying that as a, as a secondary weapon system. Um, and also, if you were wanting to come with some sort of rig sling setup, I believe, um, I mean, with breaching shotguns, we used to have them have a sort of system where it goes um, through bungee over our shoulder strap and our body armor, and then we used to magnet them onto the side of our gun belt, there'd be magnets there. Um, or uh, your, your typical shotgun holder, which is essentially like a C-clamp that the shotgun will, will sit into. I feel like I could literally carry that uh, potentially on my, on my body armor in a similar setup, but obviously it would be mission dependent. So I do like it. A little bit of weight to it. Um, I don't know the specific weights again. I don't really care for that stuff. It is what it is, just carry it. and 
find a good, find a good way to carry it. Who cares what the weight is? Um, if you, again, if you if you if you're given the shotgun in a military setting, the weight does not matter. You must fucking carry it. It is your weapon system to use, um, and again, it's probably going to come in use to you at some point in time um, whilst you're out there on the ground. So. Collapsible buttstock, like it, love it, especially, again, if I was to look at uh, modern warfare, um, I guess in, in, in that context there, where you're in and out of vehicles uh, a lot, having a weapon system that can, if we look at the size of that there, you know, like that's in, in camera frame quite nicely. Um, again, that's a, it's a, it's a nice shotgun that you could be using in and around vehicles. Um, I've definitely used longer guns uh, in and around vehicles, so that is, that's great there. Um, what do we got? Yeah, and again, main thing here is on this one, we're just running iron sights. We didn't run any sort of optics on it. Um, the cocking handle, for me, it comes down to personal preference. Uh, for me, I like to turn it over like that. And then from there, you've got your bolt release. Uh, you're, you've got your, I will talk on this. You've got your safety catch here. Okay, so it's protruding out the side. You've got your nice uh, red indicator, your red paint letting you know that this thing will fire if you pull the trigger. So you push that off uh, there, and then now the safety is coming out this side. For whatever reason, I don't know what it is. I do not like the safety. I don't know, I feel like it is in a terrible position. It's not natural. Um, I just don't like the safety position, and I feel like if you're not familiar with the weapon system, you could literally be searching for the the safety catch. If it was, if say if it was set to fire, you could be searching for the safety catch along the trigger guard, and very easy see that you could sweep that trigger. So I think it's one of those th those safeties where, for me personally, I like to eye it. Um, but there's just something about the safety I just don't like it. And Callum held the same opinion, where he just didn't like the safety catch either. Other than that, it is a very solid shotgun. It's a great piece of equipment. It's a lot of fun to fire. And I recommend if you have the opportunity to get your hands on one, you get out there and have a turn on the Benelli M4. Okay, so the rest of the video, we're just going into some effect on target, just looking at different ammunition types and the actual effect that they have um, on a target. Uh, our targets range from cardboard and paper down to smuggling some pumpkins. Anyway, team, I hope you enjoy the rest of the video. Fitzy, out. Yoki, trap load. Three inch magnum. Yeah.